New York is very rich in its birds. It has over 355 different species that migrate through here or live here or breed here. Birds from South America, Central America come up the Atlantic and they travel right through New York and they've been doing it for thousands of years. Of course, in the last thousand years, we have put up a lot of obstacles and our tall buildings are the number one cause of distress for the birds. I'm sorry, are you gonna be quiet? And I could put you back. Be quiet, all right? You got those? After that, it's our cars, our bicycles, our trucks, and then our pets, dogs and cats. And lastly, really, it's our, our trash, our poisons, our pesticides. We're treating 12 birds right now for lead poisoning. Where did they get it? They got it in the environment. How did it get there? From us. At the Wild Bird Fund Center, people come in from the five boroughs. They come in with a bird in hand. And they've gone to a great deal of trouble to find us. They take off half the day to to rescue this bird. They often have to hold it for a splint to be made because we don't have enough people here. And they always say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have to turn and say thank you for caring enough to pick up that bird and bring it in. When we first opened the center in 2012, we saw 1,500 birds. Last year, 2013, it was 2,300. And we believe this year it will be over 3,000. A lot of birds. We need other centers in the city. We're the only one for New York. We have dealt with 130 different species of birds. Well, the greatest number of birds we get are pigeons. Pigeons, starlings, and sparrows, and people think of those as the garbage birds. We're very fond of pigeons, particularly. They're so smart. And then the whole range, you know, great blue heron, little hummingbird, little kinglet. We'll have five in a row, and they're all were born this year. They're learning it the hard way. That's those guys. <laughs> if it spikes just now, I mean, she's feeling the pain. By the state statistics, 50% of the birds that come in for rehab die or are euthanized. The ones that come in who aren't doing well, we try to make their end as peaceful stress-free, pain-free, as pleasant as possible. But then the other 50% go free. It can take a long time. A few days or one day if it's a headbang, collision with a window. But if you've got broken legs and broken wings, it's two weeks with a splint, another week of cage rest, and then a week of really exercising to get the muscles back, and then they can go free. they realize we're actually trying to help them, that we're not holding them captive. And then they're the ones who they've decided, I've been here long enough and I'm gonna get out of here. And they go to the door and they look out and they try to escape, but they have a few more days to finish their medicine, then they can go and they're happy when they go. And they rarely look back, but sometimes they do. In, in point of fact, probably we might make a difference in one or two species slightly. Like we do help the peregrines, we had five this year, young peregrines that needed help. There are only 20 nesting pairs in the city, so to help five peregrines, that's a good number. Where will we make a difference? It's changing people's attitudes. I guess, I think I'm ready, he says. Mm -hmm. To make them think, yes, I want to make sure that I'm taking care of the wildlife. If I find this injured bird, now maybe I'm going to think of its habitat. Maybe I, I realize now that it flies all this way and comes through New York. Maybe we should change our glass. To make awareness of their needs is our greater mission. It feels good to do. It makes a difference to that individual bird and it makes a difference to the person who brought it in. Good guy. Left all those worms behind though. Thank you. <laughs>